Praise the Lord. Let us pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Our Father and our God, the one that made the heaven and the earth, we come to say thank you today for all that you have done for us. We thank you that we are alive by your grace, that we are heavy by your grace, that you make daily provision for us with manifold blessing. Father, I say thank you. Thank you for blessing our brothers, our sisters, our friends, our partner, all that concerns us. Thank you for blessing us all yes. and for delivering us from the evil one and from the hand of those that hate us in Jesus' name. Amen. Our dedicator has said to you as a vessel that you will use and use and use at the end you keep for yourself in Jesus' name. Amen. But thank you for your word we are about to receive today. Give us the grace to internalize it, to practicalize it, so that the blessing and promise you have for us will not tell you the God of Israel in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The topic of today is the God of Israel is our refuge. Praise to help. The God of Israel is our refuge. Ready to help. You know, as human beings, we all have a need. The world is full of need, it's full of problem. But one thing is very definite. You know, when you have problem, it's very hard to find somebody who can truly help you. When you have a true friend, they will be with you in time of need, time of your trouble, time of difficulties. But the bad friends will run away when you have trouble. They are only available when you, when you have party. They want to eat with you, they want to dine with you, they want to praise you. Immediately you show that you have money, you have friends. But today we are seeing the God of Israel. It's a refuge. Ready to help. Very, very important. May God help us in Jesus' name. Okay. We're going to be reading Psalm 46 today from Psalm 47, 48, 49, and 50. God is our refuge and strength, always ready to help in times of trouble. So we know fear when earthquake come, when earthquakes come and the mountain crumble into the sea. Let the ocean roar and foam. Let the mountain tremble as the water surge. A river brings joy to the city of our God, the secret, the secret home of the Most High. God dwell in that city. He cannot be destroyed. From the very break of day, God will protect it. The nations are in chaos and their kingdom crumble. God's voice thunder and the earth meant. The God of heaven armies is here among us. God of Israel is our fortress. Come, see the glorious work of the Lord. See how he brings destruction upon the world. He causes war to end throughout the earth. He breaks the bow and snap the spear. He break he burn the shade with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be honored by every nation. I'll be honored throughout the world. The God of heaven's army is here among us. The God of Israel is our fortress. The God of Jesus' name. It's not saying God to be honored. The person is telling us that we need to honor God. We need to fear God. You know, most people depend on their money, on their fame, on their education, on their work. But they are all in this scheme of things. When you actually come to come to the final conclusion of everything, they are but trash. They are nothing. We just heard about the Queen of England died after having been there for many years, like she had been there forever. But I remember my mother used to tell me when uh, she was young, the Queen was already there. The Queen was already a young person. When the Queen was already, when the, when, the king, when the Queen came to Nigeria in 1950 something, my mother said she was right there. She was a, a newly married woman. I was raising her children also. Can you imagine now all those years she had lived, all the wealth, all the fame, they are all gone. But the only person that remains forever is God. You see, that's the one we should fear. That is the one that can cause the world to cease. That is the one that can bring peace to the world. Most people 
depend on other things. They don't have time for God. But God is saying, the Bible is only here to say, God is the only one that can cause the world to see. The one that can cause war. The one that can break war. See, like put the right and thing has power. But God is in charge of the whole world affair. Chapter 47. Come, everyone, clap your hands. Share to God with joyful praises. For the Lord of is awesome. He is the great king of all the earth. He subdued the nations before us, putting our enemy beneath our feet. He, he chose the promised land as our inheritance. He the promised the proud possession of Jacob, descendant, whom he loved. God has descended with a mighty shout. The, the Lord has descended with trumpet blaring. Sing praises to God. Sing praises. Sing praises to our King. Sing praises. For God is the King over all the earth. Praise Him with a sound. God reigns above the nation, sitting on His holy throne. The rulers of the world have gathered together with the people of the with the people with the people of God of Abraham and all for all the kings of the earth belongs to God. He is highly honored everywhere. May God bless the word in Jesus' name. You see that here right now, every nation has king, every village, every hamlet, every every town, every local government, especially in Nigeria, they all have king. The king of this place, the king of that place. But all together, every king, kingdom, all the people together, God is the king over all. One thing about God, he doesn't, he doesn't die. He's there forever. And for that reason, he's the only one we should actually put our hope on. If you put your hope on human beings, they can fail you. If you put your hope on, if you put your hope on material thing, they can fail you. But if you put your hope on God, the God of Israel you put your hope on will never fail you. May God help us in Jesus' name. So you say it, we should sing praises to God. It's very good to sing praises. That is the only thing that the Lord actually desires from us. That's the only thing He requires from us. God does not use our money. He doesn't need it. You know, one time, I asked in the church, this money we are giving, what do we do with the money? We give it to God. Does God actually take the money? Does God come to eat the money? Then uh, a wise pastor answered. He said, no. We are only giving the money in God's name. God does not need our money. God doesn't need the money. I said, well, we don't, God doesn't need the money. He doesn't need the money. But why do we say we are giving it to God then? He said, well, because we give it in His name to pay the electricity, to pay the pastor's salary, to pay for the beauty maintenance, to pay for other things we have to use in God's name. See, that's why that's what the money is for. You see, the money stands for God doesn't need your money. Okay. So when somebody now say, give to God, God is going to multiply your money. God is not a money double. God doesn't need your money. You are like giving in honor to his name. And because you give, God will then bless you. But if somebody now telling you, oh, you want to be blessed, you have to do this, you have to bring this money. No, that's his deception. It's not scriptural. So may God help us in Jesus' name. So, chapter 40, he said, How great is the Lord! How deserving of praises in the city of our God. We sit on a holy mountain. It is high and magnificent. The whole earth rejoices to see it. Mount the city, the holy mountain. It is the city of the great king. God himself is the Jerusalem tower. Revealing himself as his defender. The kings of the earth joined forces and advanced against the city. But when they saw it, they were stunned, they were terrified, and ran away. They were gripped with terror and reigned in pain like a woman in labor. You destroyed them like a mighty ship of Tashis. Scattered by a powerful east wind. We have heard of the city glory, but now we have seen it with our own eyes. The city of the Lord of heaven army. It is the city.
city of our God, he will make it safe forever. O oh Lord, we meditate on your unfailing love as we worship in your temple, as your name deserves, O oh Lord, you will be praised to the ends of the earth. Your, your strong right hand fear, your strong right hand is filled with victory. Let the people on Mount Zion rejoice. Let all the towns of Judah be glad because of your justice. Go, inspect the city of Jerusalem. Walk around and count the many tower. Take note of the fortified wall and tour all the cedars, the cedar there, that you may describe them to future generations. For that is what God is like. He is our God forever and ever. He will guide us until we die. May God help us in Jesus' name. You find that one thing about life, there is nobody who is not going to die. If anybody tells you they are not going to die, they are deceiving themselves. And death is part of human life. The person may live to be 120 years old, as the case is today. The person may live to be 200 years old, as the case is. But the most important thing is the fear of God. Any nation, any family, any individual that don't have the fear of God, the person is making a huge mistake. As I always tell people, I say, don't be able to be rich. Oh, what do you mean? Because if you wear yourself out, you don't have time to read your Bible, you don't have time to pray, you don't have time to, to show love to your people, you don't have time to worship God, you only just pursue money, you are pursuing pleasure, you know what's going to happen? At the end of the day, you'll be the, you'll be the one who is going to lose out. You know, you find the, the Queen of England just died. I happen to have lived in England, and these are beautiful palaces. And I happen to walk around the palace there, and if you go to Trafalgar Square, those beautiful places, you find that they're very beautiful. But at the end of the day, all the people that have ever lived past through there, they are all dead. So they don't take nothing with them. That's a fact we have to keep in mind. God does not make us to live forever. It's only God Himself that lives forever. So for that reason, we have to be very careful that we will worship God. Will it praise God? Will it put our trust and confidence in God? Not in human being, not in material things. Because they say day is going to come, material things is going to fail. I am telling the gospel truth. Material things will fail. My grandfather was so rich, very, very wealthy. He has so much land. I asked one, I said, I asked my dad, how do we have so much land? Like the whole village. The whole land belongs to us. Well, my father said, my great great grandfather was also a very powerful man. And because he was a very powerful man, he was having related to the king. That father that gave birth to us in my village had a father that was living in another town, and that brother living in another town, Iraqman. He said, for that reason, when the king had a problem. My great great grandfather sent great 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 grandfather sent one of our great grandfather to come and solve the problem. And the king said, "If you come to live in the palace, I said no, I cannot. He said, okay, choose anywhere you want this land. He said he was able to take the whole land. So that's how we, we became that's how we became a great landowner. Of course, because of the university, we gave the land away. But we say we still have a lot of land today." So you find that, I started asking, How, what, what happened to the great grandfather? My father said they died. As a little boy, I used to ask a lot of questions. He said they died. Then my father then said, don't fight for land. Don't fight for riches. My father was very liberal. He said, don't fight for riches, don't fight for land. Because one day, you're going to leave them behind. Uh oh. I said, no, that's not good. Then I said, what are we laboring for them? Well, he said, that's how God created us. We cannot question God. 
So the best thing for you to do, look at this verse from verses 13 of chapter 48. He said, Take note of the 45 words and throw all the seed are there that you may describe them to future generation. For that's what God is like. Look at God, how big, how awesome, how great, how majestic are God. He's our God forever. He's our, he is our God forever and ever. And I will, I will guide and he will guide us until we die. Oh, oh. Even though this Jerusalem was magnificent, this temple is magnificent, everything is beautiful, we are going to die one day and leave it behind. Oh no! Why are you saying that? Well, that is the truth. That is the truth. So may God help us in Jesus' name. So as the children of God, we have to make sure we put our trust and confidence in God. This world is not our home. Chapter 49. Listen to this, all you people. Pay attention, everyone in the world, high and low, rich and poor. Listen, for my ways are wise and my thoughts are filled with insight. You know, insight is ability for you to look deeper than the surface value. I tell my kids every day, so when you read a book, read in between the line. That's called insight. Say, read in between the line. And I also, I also tell them, say, that one, that one give you great insight into what the author is trying to say. You never know what the author is trying to say, but if you don't have great insight, you can never understand what the author is saying. I say, it's very, very important you have great insight. If you don't have great insight about the world we are living in, you will be deceived. Every day, I watch uh, all this documentary, I watch so many people do online, I laugh. I say, but you don't understand what life is all about. I listen carefully to many proverbs. It's very, very easy, it's very, very important to listen to proverbs and so ridicule with inspiration from a sharp, from a heart. Why should I fear when trouble comes? When enemy surround me, they trust in their weight and boasted and boast of great riches. Yet, they cannot redeem themselves from death by paying a ransom to God. So you know, there are people like the Donald Trumps of America, the Bolsonaro of Brazil, and other people in like the Chinese uh, Premier and North Korea and other world dictators. They don't they are going to die tomorrow. They boast of their weapons, they boast of their weight, they boast of, they boast of their knowledge, they think they are very powerful, they are very intelligent, but they cannot redeem themselves from death. The Chinese daughter, Liz Cheney, was saying, All of you that are not denying the truth of the presidential election and following Donald Trump to do party, he said that Donald Trump is dead and forgotten, but the history will not be kind to you. So he says, Yes, they cannot redeem themselves from death. You know, when I woke up, I have a News alert. He said the, the queen has gone uh, into medical supervision. I went to online. I typed in, what is medical supervision? He said, such a thing doesn't exist. I said, what? Why did you say the language then? What the person said, it doesn't have pause. He cannot even breathe. It's not. He tried to explain it. The way no medical person can explain it. I told my I said the queen is already dead. He said, Well, they have not said she's dead. They just said medical. I said, There's nothing like medical supervision. I mean the person is dead. They just news they, they, on my cell phone, I have breaking news alert all over the whole world. So, whenever any news break, anywhere in the whole world, I will just have the alert. So, I just read it and it says it's in Bomara. And then the family member are moving there, so I say she's already dead. 
Oh, I said, no, she, I don't think she's dead. I said, no, she's dead. Look at what they are writing. Reading between the lines. So I said, well, it's a fact she's going to die. The mother died at the age of 100. The father died at the age of 50 something years old. And she has lived long. So I said, the husband died most about 100 years old. I said, it's a fact that she's going to die one day. But my wife said, I'm just sad. He said, she's going to die. I said, well, do you know her? I said, your mother died, your father died, my mother died, my father died. I said, I don't know this woman. I said, I don't know her. I said, I don't really have any feeling. Either this way or that way. I said, when you read the history, see what they have done. They are cause of slavery. They, they deny to black people and all the evil they have done to African people and to black people. I said, no, but that's okay. That is just me. But you find that, yet, they cannot redeem themselves from death by paying a ransom to death, by paying a ransom to God, I mean. Redeem, redemption does not come so easily, for no one can ever pay enough to live forever and never see the grave. That is not possible, brothers and sisters. I don't care how much money you have. I don't care how intelligent you are. I don't care how smart, how brilliant, how beautiful you are. You know what that's why is telling us? We should devote our time to serve the Lord, to show love, to show kindness. You know, when uh, I go to places like Walmart, Sun Club, other places, those people that push the, the, the cart, the sun is very hot, and they put the cap on, they are pushing this cart. When I see that, I say, hello, hello, brother, how you doing? I go ahead and pat them by the back. And uh, I'll see the guy say, you're doing a good job. I say, thank you, sir, thank you, sir. I say, see, this is the key to success. I say, you know what you need to do now? Try to read your Bible, try to pray, try to show love. This is how to become a very successful man. And uh, yesterday, I was just going, I didn't see this guy. He saw me from, he said, hello, sir, hello, sir. How are you doing, sir? How are you doing, sir? <laughs> so I said, well, how do you do, my son? How do you do, my son? He said, I'm doing all right, sir. I'm doing all right, sir. I said, okay. I said, go bless you, my son. And I could see it was still in the sun because the sun had been a little bit rising. Whether that cold or sun is pushing this thing. But you know what happened? Show love to people. That is the only thing that is important. I don't care how you think and powerful you are. The less of those people who may be at the bottom, those people that greet you at, uh, at uh, the, the when you're entering Sun Club, I, kiss, I will hug them, they will kiss me, they will, oh, oh, oh Pastor, thank you very much. They, they hug me, they kiss me. I say, God bless you, you're doing a wonderful job. They say, thank you very much. You make my day. And everybody wants to shake my hand. Someone asks me, what, are you running for office? I say, why? He said, because I see everybody is greeting you. I say, yes, I'm a pastor. I'm not asking them to come and join my church. I'm not trying to preach to them, but just talking to them. Somebody told me when they said, I want to come to your church. I said, we don't have a church, we do online. He said, we have to come to your church. So what is there is that, is the love you show to people. Let them show love, very, very important. Don't, don't think anybody is beneath you or you are superior to somebody else. Don't let, the mo don't let your money deceive you. Don't let your education deceive you. Don't let your beauty deceive you. Don't even let people you associate with deceive you. So why are very careful what you do? May God help us in Jesus' name. Those who are wise must finally die. Just like the foolish and senseless. Leaving all their weight behind. Oh, oh. The grave is their internal home where they will stay forever. They may name their estates after themselves, but their fame will not last. They will die just like animals. This is the fake of fools, though they are remembered as being wise. 
You see, a lot of people want to spend all their time walking, 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 and walking. They have no time for God. They don't have time to rest. What are we pushing? Money. So people want to study 24 hours. I was talking to my little boy yesterday. I said, son, don't overburn yourself at by overstudy. He said, that I'm okay. I said, but I know. Don't overburn yourself. I said, just do as much as you can. Once you have done your best, that's what I require. And put your faith in God. I said, put all your effort and your love for God. I said, that is the key to happiness. Because if you don't take time, there are people who are committing suicide. I don't know if you guys listen to news, Best and Beyond CFO, Chief Financial Officer, so it's called CFO. This guy, you know, he can always manipulate numbers. That's why we had to do auditing, and we call it paper tray, and we call it bank tray. In so many things, when you are doing auditing, you have to begin to say, okay, we, we bought this item, we sold this item, we made this extra amount of money, we paid this person, this money is supposed to remain, where does this money go, this and that. So this guy manipulated his stocks and bought a lot of stuff for himself. Then he sold them. After selling them, what did he do? He pocketed the money. And people realized what he did was bad. Now he's feeling bad. And the company is not doing well. He has made a lot of money right now. You know what he did? What? Just listen, I will tell you. Don't be in a rush. So do not be in a rush. I will tell you what he did. This guy jumped from 25 story building in New York and fall down and turn to pieces. Uh oh, what happened to his money? How does the other's money again? Well, <laughs> he left everything behind. Oh, oh, that's what Bible says. Do not labor to be rich. You brought nothing into this world, you are going to take nothing away. When the guy was manipulating those numbers, he looked very smart. He looked very intelligent. He had this big, account, big fat account worth millions and millions of dollars. The guy probably thought he was the top of the world, but he does not realize how he got the money was not an honest way. Well, it was not an honest way, what happened? He died for the money. And if he died and he killed himself, you know, murder is a sin. Whether you kill yourself, somebody kill you. Bible warns us, do not commit suicide or do not murder. Murder is suicide to kill yourself. And that is, well, I don't want to go there. I would have said that's automatic hellfire. That will be very careful what you do. So, do not stress yourself for nothing. Just enjoy yourself, eat, relax, and have fun. That's all life is all about. Verse 14 of chapter Psalm 49. Like sheep, they are led to the grave. Where death will be their shepherd. In the morning, the gully will rule over them. Their body will not, their body will rot in the grave, far from their grand estates. But as for me, God will redeem my life. He will snatch me from the power of the grave. You know, if you look at some of these Bible passages, they may look like contradiction. Misnomer, but it is not. That was the time to read what he's saying. The guy said, if we not, if the guy says not going to die, no. You know, when you know God, you don't actually die. There are certain about death. Jesus said, He that believes in the Son of God has eternal life and is far from death to life. But he that does not have the Son of God is already condemned. The person is already dead. You see how many people living in the whole world today don't know Christ, they're already dead. 
they polish their body with all this screen, all this uh, nice screen, which I don't use, they are carcinogenic. Meaning they are cancer, they are cancer causing agents in them. Just use basic cream and that's it. I'm not telling you not to use it if you are not committing sin. So that is just my personal opinion. So what guy is saying that you know there is first death, there's a second death. Every one of us is going to die. But at the same time, we do not die. I don't use the word there, I call it transition. Transition, moving from one stage of life to another stage of life. So it's very, very important to understand that fact. But if you don't have Christ, you're already dead while you're living. Like a person that living in pleasure. He says he's already dead while he's living. But the guy is I'm having fun. I watch a lot of uh, this, what is what people are doing there. And I'm saying, this guy doesn't know what he's doing to himself. The life we are living is not our life. It's a gift from God. And because it's a gift from God, we have to make sure we live it to please God. So the guy is now saying, I am living beyond the first death. I'm going to have eternal life. That's what he's saying. So don't be dismayed when the wicked grow rich and their homes become ever more splendid. For they, for when they die, they take nothing with them. Their wealth will not follow them into the grave. Do you hear that one? Their wealth will not follow them into the grave. But if you don't know this fact, you want to become rich at all costs to your own detriment. I have some experience in the bank and they're working with the government because I see what a lot of people are doing in terms of money. I was working in this area where we had to hand money to a lot of people. And uh, I just laugh when I see what they are doing. People think this money is free. They want to steal it as much as they can. I just laugh. I say, what do you need it for? What do you need this money for? What? It doesn't matter how much money you have. If you're not content, you're not going to be content. Even they give you the whole money, the whole world. They give you all the aeroplane. They give you all the women. They give you all the men. They give you all the drink. They give you all the gold. Name everything, all the whole thing in the world. What are you going to do with them? That's when I see people stealing money in Nigeria. I'm saying, are these people crazy? They have mental deficiency. Something that is not right. What are you going to do with this money? What are you going to do with it? You are going to die one day. And you go, I don't know, it's not the way I raise the other people reason. I want to do something. I want to tell somebody, I say, our life now is a good legacy. It's not to accumulate wealth. I want to build a legacy. There's something who will say after we're no more here. So it's very, very important. So those who are rich, he said, they will leave this work behind. Uh oh. Verse 18. In this life, they consider themselves fortunate and applauded for their success. But they will die like all before them and never again see the light of the day. It's not talking of physical light, it's talking of internal light. If you don't have the light of God, you know when you die, there's a book called Life After Life. I read a book written by uh, the Moody Press in Chicago. I read a book in the 70s. Life After Life. After we actually exist this earth, we transition from this earth, there's another life we're going to live. And that life is a bigger life than this one. So that's the one people that you don't have to cry. If they know Christ, they are going home, they are going to rest. And also I can say they are going to rest, meaning they will sit from their labor. There's no more going to work, cooking, cleaning, doing all this minor job or not minor job, all this daily job. Don't let me see the minor job. There's nothing like minor job. There's no more rushing to go to school, to go and pay the children, go, come to cook, come to clean, come to do all these things. No. Those one says, you have perpetual happiness and state of perpetual joy. That's what light of day. But those are not looking at the living in darkness when they die. 
there is actual darkness. There was a mother died in Siberia. And after the guy died, people actually held on the ground almost about 2,000 feet. Somebody was crying. And the fire was so hot that when they put her this thing, it's almost more than 1,000 degrees. And the person was, oh no, oh, it was actually kind recorded. If you tap it in Google, you can hear it. But how did that person manage to get there and he's still crying even though he was dead? They said, that is a taste of hellfire. That's not a real hellfire. The real hellfire is going more than that one. So we go about the other. So, brothers and sisters, we should give ourselves to praise God, to serve God, to love God, to work hard to please God. Don't labor to become so worthy at whose expense, at your own spiritual detriment. Not just by getting rich and not have no problem. It's better to be rich than to be poor. I always say, to be poor is a crime. It's not the will of God. The Lord wants to bless every one of us. And He wants us to be a blessing. So for God to bless you, your heart must be in God. People who boast of their wealth don't understand. Oh, I own this. I own that. Oh, do you know who I am? I have this big car. I have this, I have this big bank account. I have this money. He said, they do not understand. They will die just like animals. You know, I watch animal on KRA. And the guy said, how does this elephant feel? When they find that another elephant is dead, they feel, they say they have brain, very super brain, they go and come back, they are kind of mourning, they are depressed, even though they don't understand what they are saying, they are saying something. And after they move around there, they come back, even after the person, after the after the another elephant has died for many days, many weeks, sometimes after the bone is rotting, and after the bone, the flesh is gone, they still come back there. You see them kind of touching the bone, like this is life, this is life. So brothers and sisters, the Bible is warning us, people who boast of their weight do not understand. People who boast of their weight, they don't understand. So don't boast of weight, because everything we have is a gift from God. You know if you don't have life, you cannot boast of anything. And the life we have is a bread of God. And it's a gift to God. It's a gift, gift to us from God. So for that reason, we must tend to worship God and fear Him. Because one day, we will, we will not be here. But we will be, we will be much alive, much more alive. You know, there is, a, there is a recording equipment from Moody Bible School in Chicago. This equipment was invented by another by the how do you say top scientists, the, the the astronaut or somebody. They invented it. You can actually put that recording down, take that recording to your village and tune it. You hear the, the, the voice of your great great grandfather. You hear them talking. He said that's to tell you their voice is still around. Because it's a spiritual issue. Uh oh. I said, that's frightening. So, they actually put it in Chicago and listen to what Moody was saying to know whether it was true because most of his recordings are recorded. They went ahead and listened to his voice. It's, it's exactly the same. Me, our voice is living on. Whatever we do today will be on forever. So, we have to be very careful what we say and what we do. May God help us in Jesus' name. Chapter 50 of Psalm. The Lord, the mighty one, is God. He has spoken. He has summoned all humanity from where the sun rises to where it sets. From Mount Zion, the perfect beauty of God shines in glorious radiance. For our God approaches and he is not silent. Fire before everything in his way, and a great storm rages around him. He dwells on the heavens above. 
and earth below to witness the judgment of his people. So, when you go into the space, oh my God, there is so much power and information there, there is so much fire, there is so much energy, you can't believe it. Heaven upward is far, far away. And when you go down to the earth, you know they have never traveled to inside the core of the earth. The core of the earth has so much fire. Right now, you and I, we are living in our little houses, offices, wherever you are, your apartment. You are standing on top of water. Your house on top of water. Why do you say that? How can you build a house upon water? Just relax. It's called aqua. Aqua fresh. Underground water. If you are able to dig, even the place is very far, like my village, Nekuma, the place is very far to dig. You, cannot, you don't dig well. But if you have a big hydro equipment, you can, you can dig to 2,000, 3,000 feet, you find water. Or even less than that one, you will find water. After that one, you will find what they call gas. Natural gas. After that one, you will find liquid petroleum. You find crude petroleum. After that one, you find lava, sulfur, lava, is fire. After that one, you find real lake of fire. You see, this, this fire is moving all around right now. That's why when the core of the earth is kind of loose, the fire will explode. And the fire will come out, will begin to bring us spruit out lava. So everything we have in this world is such a mighty power that when you consider everything God has created, you begin to fear. Say, this God is mighty God though. We need to fear Him. That is just the earth. But when you go up, what we call the heavens, there are so many, many power there. So many planetary, Milky Way, galaxy, so many things. God created all of this thing. May God help us in Jesus' name. So for that reason, the earth is just a small little thing. It's just a piece of dust, speck of dust on there. So what is human being that we should be boasting? We are nothing. All we need to do is to praise and worship and to fear God. Bring. Bring my faithful people to me, those who made a covenant with me by giving sacrifice. Then let the heavens proclaim his justice, for God himself will be the judge. O oh, my people, listen as I speak. Here are my charges against you, O oh, Israel. I am God, your God. I have no complaint about your sacrifices or the burnt offering you constantly offer. But I do not need the bull from your barns or the gold from your pens. For all the animals of the forest are mine. And I own the cattle on a thousand hills. I know I know every bird on the mountains and all the animals of the field are mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell you, for all the world is mine, and everything in it. Do I eat the meat of goats? Do I drink the blood of goat? Make thankfulness your sacrifice to me, to God, and keep the vow you made to the Most High. Then call on me, when you are in trouble and I will rescue you I will give 
and you will give me glory. Our our Torah our says, God of Israel is our refuge, and it will help us and our help. So you find that the greatest danger I see in the churches today, people make vows. Oh, pastor, I'll give one thousand. I give that. Don't do it. Don't let anybody force you to make a vow. There is nothing wrong if everybody is shouting, I'm going to give this amount of money. You don't give, you are not committing sin. Listen and listen very well. But if you want, if you vow, you refuse to give, that's where the sin comes in. Listen to me and listen very well. God does not need your money. Uh oh. As he says, I do not need your bull. I don't need your cow. I don't need your blood of animal. I don't need nothing from you. All I want from you is your praises. That's the way you wake up in the morning. I bless you, O Lord. I worship you, O Lord. With a heart of thanksgiving. I bless you, O Lord. Then you are saying praise to God. That's what God wants from you. God doesn't need your money. Money is useless. It's only really valuable because of the means of exchange when you come to the economic time. If you bring Naira, which is Nigeria money, or Siri, which is Ghana money, to this place, nobody will take it from you. You bring Naira. I have some Naira with me. If I go to the store now, I buy something. They say one dollar. I give them one Naira. Although I don't have one Naira, I give them a hundred Naira. They are going to take it. They say, what is that? I say, it's his money. They say, get away from here. That's not money. I say, well, it is money. In another country, they are taking it. But because the, the dollar is a world currency, before, in the 80s, nobody take dollar. People who used to come from the US, when I know I was coming to the US, they give me dollars. I couldn't spend it in Nigeria. I had to give it to somebody that's coming to the US. But today now, the case is somebody the same. So God does not need your money. What he needs is your prison. But God says to the wicked, Why bother reciting my decrees and pretending to obey my covenant? For you refuse my discipline and treat my words like trash. When you see the thieves, you approve, you, you approve of them and you spend your time with adulterers. Your mouth is filled with wickedness. Your tongue is full of lies. You sit around and slander, and slander your brother, your own mother's, your own mother's son. Why you did all this, I remained silent, and you thought I did not care. But now, I will rebuke you, listing all my charges against you. Repent, all of you, who forget me, or I will tear you apart, and no one will help you. But giving thanks is a sacrifice that truly honors me. You mean there is God. If you keep to your path, I will reveal to you the salvation of God. May God bless you in Jesus' name. You know, the problem with the church today, there are a lot of thieves, lots of liars, lots of money and bezlers, lots of people that steal money from the government whether in America or in Nigeria, and they come to church. They know they are thieves. Everybody is president. Oh, I was listening to the news yesterday. They said the guy that was negotiating with uh, this uh, bandit was arrested in, uh, in, in, in uh, I was listening to Nigeria, he was arrested in, uh, in Egypt when he was going to minor uh, Haji in, uh, in, in uh, Mecca. And uh, the guy was saying, why did you not arrest him in Nigeria? Well, I said, no, really, because he has all the connections in Nigeria. If they arrest him, then they will be captured. Because when they want to arrest you, they, they want to arrest you at your weakest point. That's why they arrest him in a foreign country. So they said, when they want to search his house, they find two billion naira. They were billions of money in his house. They had lots of guns, military uniform, different ranks of military uniform. And this guy is saying he's negotiating to, he's the, he's the negotiator between the, the kidnappers and everything. And he's the, he's the kidnapper, they try. So, you find that that guy, they 
have been paralyzing with celebrity say he's a rich man, he's a business man. But what does he do? How does he get his money? That is the question I always ask. I say, this guy is rich. How does this guy got his initial money? Well, maybe the guy has been trading with $10, he turns to $20, he turns to $100, he turns to $1,000, to $2,000. He may have been doing it for 30 years, 40 years. Now, over this year, the money is expanding, which is okay. But if the guy has stolen the money, you know, I went to Nigeria, I see some people, I know what they are doing in America. I just pretend I don't know what's going on. They have stolen money from here or from Europe. They come to establish different kind of things. I look at them and laugh. But what is the value of money? You are going to leave it behind one day. If you see what is the value. There are people that steal money from Nigeria. They bring the money here to buy houses. We know they are dear, but we are praising them. Oh, honorable. Uh, he says, Excellency, is this and that. And when the parties are the invited, they are governor, they are minister. Where did they get the money? So, but that's what the Bible is saying here. He said, they have stolen this thing. You are making friends with them. You are laughing with them. You become their friends. But God is seeing everything that is happening. May God help us in Jesus' name. He said, you should stay away from them. You turn around, you are tearing people apart with your, with your mouth. You see that? All you do is gossip, 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 gossip. Why are you just, we're just talking? No. He said, your own mother's children, you are tearing them with your mouth. If you cannot help them, don't say anything. Just leave them. So may God help us in Jesus' name. Brothers and sisters, as the children of God, we have to know this world is not our home. The Queen of England just died. That's a lesson to us that it doesn't matter how long we live. We are going to die one day. And it is not how much money we have or how much education. It's how we live our life to serve God, to honor God, to help our fellow human being. That is the most important thing. Every now and then, I sit down, I'm looking for a way to help people. Write your resume, help you to look for a job. If you tell me you have any problem, medical issue, I want to go and research it. I want to pray for the person. I want to get involved. I want to see as much as possible. People call me, this is happening to me. I try to see how much I can help them or pray for them. At the end of the day, we are not taking nothing without brothers and sisters. What are you doing for God? Don't labor and stress yourself to death. The Bible says, cease from your labor and worship the Lord. Are you worshiping the Lord? God does not need your money. It's your heart that God needs. And when you have the heart for God, giving becomes very easy. The love for your fellow human being becomes very easy. So may God help us in Jesus' name. Over the years, I found that people may say they are not good people. They are very the easy one to say, oh, pastor my bad guy. Remember when I was in Lagos? These are sisters from the Ebu Himi side. Every time we are talking, we say, pastor, we say, brother, they always call me brother. Say, brother, I'm not, I'm, I'm not a good woman. I wish I'm a good woman. I say, listen, being a good person is a bit to tell God you are sorry for your sin. She is very lovely, very kind. When I come from England that time, or when I travel, I come back, I'll stay with her. Very lovely sister. We are, because in Lagos, all the Islam people were one family. Any Islam person, people come to my house also. From Ewo Himi, from Ubiaja, from Umboha, from all kind of places. They come and stay in my house. So we are all one family. We are, we are brothers at that time and sisters. We were family. And he would say, brother, this is my weakness. I said, don't worry. The Lord will know your weakness. The Lord understands who you are. And whenever I go to a church, I have a lot of evil brothers. We are real brothers. I give them my heart. How you my brother? I give them my key. We are real brothers. Today we call each other brother. We don't just say, oh, it's my Christian friend from such a place. No, we never use that word. My brother, my sister. That's what we are used to. Because we are truly brother. The blood of Christ is flowing through our veins. And then we can help each other, we do help as much as possible. 
and that's the joy of being a Christian family. Brothers and sisters, I don't know if you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I don't know if you just go to church to show off or to look for things you're looking for, which I don't know. But God is not interested in that. God is interested in your heart. And don't labor to be rich. Money is good, but don't let money deceive you. The Bible says money is illusion. So it's, it's an illusive. The more you want money, the, the more you have money, the more you, 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 you get. My wife and I were talking yesterday. We were talking and said, you remember one time when they were paying you about uh, $20 an hour? He said, yes. I said, you say, what if I can make $30? When you're making 30, I can make 40. If you make 40, now you're not saying, if I can make 60. If I can make 70, if I can make 70. I said, that is human nature. The more we make, the more we want. So we have to be very careful that our heart is not being deceived by money. Because it can, it, it, can, it, can, it can be very deceptive. You look at this, your paycheck is very big. I want to work more. I want to work more. For what? Be content with what you have. We brought nothing into this world. We are going to do what? I'm not going to take nothing away. May God help us in Jesus' name. Brothers and sisters, we're going to stop here today. I don't know if you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. If you happen to know Jesus, the greatest gift ever you can give to God is your heart. Your heart. That is the biggest gift. I'm telling you right now. As a friend and partner in this ministry and in the race to go to heaven, heaven is our goal. Though. As a ministry, we don't have a church, we don't have a building, we don't sell a seat for a fund. That's not our goal. Our goal is to teach people the mind and the will of God. To know that this world is not our home. The goal of divine revelation is to pray family that will hear God's voice, to do God's will, and to be a blessing to God's family worldwide. That's our goal. If you are not yet into that goal, then you are missing, you are missing the point. Jesus is calling you, and Jesus is calling me. Give your heart to Jesus. Repent of your sin. And tell Jesus you are sorry for anything we have seen against him. I don't know, don't tell me, I'm not interested. I, I'm not the one to forgive you, but if you want me to pray with you, say, Brother, Pastor, this is what is bothering me, we can agree together. All of us will have one weakness or the other. Nobody is perfect, only God. You know, the, 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 the man came to Jesus and said, That good man. Jesus said, Nobody is perfect, only God. And Jesus said, You must be born again. The man said, Look at the man, say, What are you talking about? I can only born again. I'm already an old man. Meaning you, you must change your attitude, you must change your heart. You must think about the things of God. That's called being born again. If you see, get involved with the worldly thing. You don't have no feeling for God, for the things of God, for the people of God. You don't have the fear. You don't think about when you are going to die and how you are going to spend your eternity. Something is not right. So we go ahead and Jesus' name. We are going to stop here today. <laughs> And we're going to pray God help us to know that this world is not our home. That we have a home far away. And our home is in heaven. We're going to spend time with God forever. In Jesus' name. Do we have any prayer Do we have any prayer requests? Something you want us to pray for? Something you want, you want us to remember you about or any of your friends or family? But if not, I go to pray. We need to remember Bishop Wadia. He's still uh, in Nigeria, and uh, the issue is of teacher at that time, but uh, the work is working on. And I ask God to be with him and guide him and protect him. And uh, we need to pray for Ukraine. We need to pray for Nigeria for the coming election. We need to also pray for this country that God will give uh, Joe Biden the wisdom to rule the nation right. And to make the policy so that women, I'm not a woman, I have never been pregnant one day. I know being a woman is not easy. And uh, women should be able to control their body. Nobody should tell a woman what to eat, what to wear, what not to do. It's your body. Who has the right? Who make you? Who? These people say we want a small government. We don't want women to control, but they are telling women what to do. That's madness. So, ele 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 election is coming. You must know one day I'm going to have three daughters in the, not too long, not too far from today. I will still have three daughters. 
And these daughters should be able to have their freedom to do whatever they want to do with their body. I don't want anybody to be telling them what to do or what not to do. And that's, that's my concern. So remember, election is very, very important. Oh, don't say, oh, it's, it's, it doesn't matter if I vote or not. It matters a lot. So be God was in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Let, let, let us pray. In Jesus' name. Father, God, want to bless and magnify your holy name. Jehovah, God, want to give you the glory, all the honor, all the praises, all adoration. Say, blessed be your name, Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Holy Father, I bring all our partners who are here today with their family. Anyone that may be sick, where are the church my hidden? Your word says, healing is the children's bread. You say, send forth your word and heal them of all their diseases. Whatever sickness will be in our family today, in our personal life, in our father, in our mother, in our brother and sister, and to those who are dear to us, Father, we ask that you heal them all with the blood of Jesus that redeemed the world in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Father, as a partner, as friends, as family, if there's anyone who have sinned against you, when you examine this world today, if there's anyone who will come short of your glory, forgive our Lord God of Israel and have mercy upon us in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Father, we bring every person presented here today. We pray for our husbands, we pray for our wives. We pray for our children, we pray for our brothers, we pray for our sisters, we pray for those who are not able to join us today because of work, that you also meet their needs now in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And those may be that this, in the distant land, like Bishop Wadia in Nigeria and the family, Father, be with us all in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Father, deliver us from the evil ones, from terrorism, and from those that hate us. Father, make us to be cognizant of this Father. We should love you. We should serve you. We should honor you. We should sing praises to you all the time. You don't need our money. You don't need our wood. You don't need our goat. You don't need our cow. You don't need anything from all you need is praises. Yes. And to honor the vow we made that we are going to serve you. We give our life to Jesus. We say, take the whole world and give it Jesus. That's all I need. Father, give us the grace to keep that vow. Yes. To read our Bible. To pray. To tell others about Jesus. Yes. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Yes. But I pray for Joe Biden, that will give you the wisdom to rule this nation right, to make the right policy that will bless us and bless this nation in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. We we'll pray for this coming election, Lord, that it will be according to your will to favor Joe Biden, that you know what the policy is doing, to honor your people and to take them out of poverty in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. We we'll pray for Ukraine, we we'll pray for this country, this will here, we we'll build the peace of terrorism. All those gun, people that carry guns, shooting people in their office, in their home, on the street. Father, we will never know us, our dear one, in Jesus' name. Amen. We deliver our children from this kind of terrorism and our self and our family in Jesus' name. Amen. We pray for Ukraine, we pray for Jerusalem, we pray for Nigeria, and pray for that country that has presented here, Lord God of Israel, that your grace and mercy be raised towards us all in the name of Jesus Christ. We are going to do your will, we have no powers of our own, some trust in chairs. All that trust in horses, some trust in talisman. But we trust in Jehovah God. The Bible says that trust in Jehovah God shall be like my Zion yes. that abided forever. Yes. Father, we abide, we trust in you. Anyone who has sinned against you, forgive us. Yes. What we have said, what we have do, what we have failed to say or failed to do, have mercy. Have mercy, God of Israel, in Jesus' name. Yes. Father, bless us and deliver us from sickness. Deliver us from disease, deliver us from poverty, deliver us from the hand of those who hate us, and deliver us from natural disaster. And let your blessing and favor be upon us, upon our family, in Jesus' name. Father, we come to do your will. We come to do your will, Lord. We come to do your will. May your will be justified in our hearts and our home and our life. And fill up with your wisdom. Fill up with that joy, joy that comes from you, in Jesus' name. May the Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. May we find favor with God and with man, who saw we come in contact with, in Jesus' name. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I want to thank all of you for coming. I know this is almost summer time, most people travel, and uh, most people are doing extra work in their place of work, and one thing or the other. 
It's a time for very busy, but ask God to be with you. Your time is not in vain. Yes. Your labor is not in vain. The Lord will reward you. God will say, you should praise me. That's what God needs. God doesn't need our money. Are you praising God? You are in good thought. And God will be with us until we leave this world. How long will shake our life? We will we, we, we go to serve God and do His will. In Jesus' name. God is a refuge